He's pro-choice, pro-gun control. He opposes the death penalty. He's been arrested for protesting U.S. intervention in El Salvador, and he's not Jesse Jackson. He's here. He's had a hand in repopulating Yellowstone Park with wolves. But before all that, he won seven Emmy Awards, five Golden Globes for his work in television. He's back in a new series coming to TV uh, very soon, Edward Asner, Thunder Alley on ABC. I, uh, Thank you, Roger. I uh, said you were not Jesse Jackson. Mr. Jackson was on, and he had all those positions. He's got more hair. <laughs> That's true. He's doing a commercial for the New York Times. Did you see that? No, is he? Yeah, I haven't seen it. Yeah, he did one. Is it? Maybe it's local. It's that's that's very possible. Actually, he and Rush Limbaugh <laughs> did a. Uh, I, you stay up and watch Rush, don't you? No, I I, I somehow can't stay up that late. <laughs> but uh, certainly, um, in awe of his uh, great uh, great. Uh, um, well, I can't call them accomplishments. What can I call them? Well, do you think he's a good communicator? Well, since I don't watch him, how can I tell that? Well, I guess by the fact that he has 20 million people listening. And yeah, but so then Hitler was a great communicator. Well, you, say well you wouldn't equate him with Hitler, would you? Oh, no, no, no. But, I mean, we're talking about two different communicators. Well, that's true. But, I mean, that's one test is whether you can draw an audience. Yeah, yeah. I suppose public executions would draw audiences, too. You know, Phil Donahue's been trying to get that done. He was a guest mm -hmm. of mine. and he's, he, Do you support that? He, he wants to do it. No, a because I know there are f enough freaks out there, those who, you know, watch Limbaugh and well, those like who it. would go to execution. So I, were I'm, you this liberal when you were young, or when did it hit you? No, I, I don't think so. You grew I, up in the Midwest. Yeah, yeah, Kansas City, Kansas. Uh, so you probably were apolitical in those days. You were playing high school oh, no, football. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, being, uh, being a young kid, uh, Jewish kid, growing up in Kansas City, Kansas, at the time of Hitler, you don't... You don't uh, you That's don't tough. think about being a conservative. Yeah. Uh, you, you tend to associate. My parents were both foreign born. I'd say my dad voted Republican all the time. My mom probably negated his vote with Roosevelt. But uh, You sided uh, with your mom. Did you know, when did you become aware of political? Well, Roosevelt was Moses. Roosevelt mm -hmm. was uh, the savior. Uh, I, uh, both my sisters were social workers. I think that was an ameliorating influence on me. And uh, just being a minority in Kansas City, Kansas, tends to give you some thoughts. In, in How did your family end up in Kansas? Uh, because, as you say, it's not uh, there were not a lot of Jewish families that went to Kansas. Well, uh, my father came out of uh, uh, spent a year in the sweatshops in New York. He landed, I suppose, at Ellis Island. My uh, and that was before 1900. My mother came in in 1913 to uh, Galveston, as they pronounced it. Galveston. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, they came to Kansas City because of uh, uh, Lanzmann, and I probably my father did the same thing. Uh, and very few people know about the fact that the, the rich German Jews of the time created programs to get, keep, try to keep the ghettos from being overpopulated. So they didn't want to be embarrassed by the Russian Jews. So they created a fund called the Industrial Removal Plan was on the East Coast. And that tended to funnel Jews, while they were on ship yet, to the other parts of the country, along the seaboard. And then eventually, about 10 years later, they started the Galveston Plan, which, as they came through Galveston, were fanned out through the Midwest and the South. Were you aware of, uh, of prejudice against Jews at that age? I mean, did you have that problem? Yeah, I, uh, I heard the verbal slurs. But Still, for, you know, in Kansas City, Kansas, it was very mild compared to what it was elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, there certainly were no Bunds, no Nazis, but uh, uh, people didn't know Jews either. Mm -hmm. they, uh, uh, we, we were still strange, but I, I had a wonderful coterie of friends, uh, and I, I, mean, I, I still felt that, a minority. Uh, you're, a, you're known as a tough guy. Uh, uh, you played tough guy parts and so on. Did you have to be tough in those days? Uh, did you fight? No, I didn't. I didn't fight. Uh, we, um, we didn't do that much. That's why I, when I say Kansas City, Kansas was, was uh, gentle, it, it was a, a gentle place to grow up, even with the insidious psychological and mental grievances one might suffer. Uh, it was typical America. Um, we were segregated. Uh, uh, the Catholic uh, high school desegregated a year before uh, 
it became it several years, many years uh, before uh, the public schools did, so that we got an influx of white kids from the Catholic school who wouldn't go to school with blacks. Describe your mother to me. What was she like? Well, I always think of Mother Goodrich. Remember Mother Goodrich? Mm -hmm. Roly poly, yeah, sweet, yeah. Mrs. Santa Claus type. Yeah. That was my mother. What about your dad? He was about my height, uh, probably slimmer than I am now, definitely slimmer than I am now. Actually, you look like you've uh, lost some weight. I was a little well, upset being out here with you. I was hoping you'd be a lot heavier, frankly. Well, you had Rush. What do you want? <laughs> oh, God. I, well, I like to stand next to him. I look, <laughs> Yeah. But uh, another good Midwestern boy. He's just a few hundred miles away. That's true. In, uh, it's amazing Missouri, how you can grow up so different. That's right. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, whatever the politics in the Midwest, yeah, I, you know, Harry Truman talked about the, the, the bloody uh, uh, bloody Kansas and bloody Missouri. Right. Uh, I think a, so much blood was spilled there that I think it became quiescent from the Civil War on. Um, my father was very uh, taciturn. Uh, he was very strong and uh, was a very honorable man. When he built his sheds at the junkyard, he made sure that he built pigeon coats into the, uh, the outside of the, uh, the roof. And eventually they got filled up, but he didn't, he didn't clean them out. But he, he loved animals. And um, Where'd you get your sense of humor? Oh, God. It took me a long time to discover that. My middle brother is a, is a, um, he's a sly fox, and he inculcated a lot of humor in me. He's, really? a, he's a funny man. He can take two, three days developing a joke on someone. <laughs> he's, he's the kind that, uh, who wrote Haircut? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Ring Lardner. Yeah. He's the kind of Midwestern uh, creature that Ring Lardner was. Uh, we're going to talk about the new series. I want to talk politics with you. We can't get away without that. Do, how much time do I have in this segment? Can I roll a, uh, a clip from the new show? Tell me about Thunder Alley. So we, Where'd you get this staccato technique? You know, years I watched guys follow those cards, and it always made me crazy. <laughs> you know, so I figured you just so say the, whatever comes yeah, into your head. I haven't and it's been subjected to a barrage like this. <laughs> we're going to talk about politics in a minute. I want to talk about Thunder Alley. It's coming up on ABC, a competitive network, but they need the help. No, they're actually doing pretty well. Thunder Alley is about a race car? Well, it ostensibly is. It's about a, a hopefully a functional family of three generations uh, in the environs of Detroit. Okay, let's roll the clip from Thunder Alley and we'll talk about it. Uh, Dad, uh, J Jenny has something to say to you. Oh, good. I feel like talking. I'm in a <laughs> chatty mood. You know? Leland, whip up some cappuccino. <laughs> we'll talk the whole night away. As a matter of fact, we, why don't we all go up to the tree house and have a stinking family reunion? <laughs> you folks know family? Uh, yes. Uh, that is. So it's a, it, it's a sitcom. Mm -hmm. And it's, mm -hmm. uh, you play a grouchy guy, apparently. What? No, no, no. I mean, a man subjected to all the... the the tediousness and pressures yeah, yeah. of family. Of family. Yeah, you, know, you know how great it is to be just by yourself. <laughs> I do. Oh, do you? <laughs> yes, I, I do. Uh, and it's coming up when? Let me just get that. We're in. returning to the air on March 11th. Okay, Edward Asner. March 7th. March 7th, coming up in Thunder Alley on ABC. Okay, we have a minute before the break. Um, I thought my, my walking in here was really good and smooth and all that until I... Tip the table over I know it's a cheesy table. Actually, no, we have a better table out in Fort Lee, but we didn't. We didn't want you to have to go to Fort Lee, so we used the cheesy table. But it, if it had been more substantial, I would have tripped over. It. Oh, okay. Well, then <laughs> I'm glad. Uh, Thanks for using the cheesy table. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, crew here. Uh, it is a cheesy table. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this deal. It's a bad <laughs> thing. Look at this. Uh, uh, Going back to your your political beliefs, when they arrested you, did they rough you up or did they oh, treat no. you with great respect? No, not great respect, but they, they treated me. Do they cuff you? Oh yeah. yeah. I have a little trouble getting my arms behind my back. Yeah, that was when, that was. Uh, when I'm cuffed, it's tough. You know. What I mean? It was, uh, but they uh, <laughs> well, they just need longer cuffs. That's yeah, all. they need uh, sort of leg irons or something for me. But uh, so they were we, uh, respectful. Oh yeah, yeah they. Uh, uh, you know, I'm sure, I think a couple of them uh, 
muttered. Uh, they supported us and, and all that, but uh, they were doing their duty. I got to take a break here. We're with Edward Asner. Sorry for interrupting, but they cut out in cable, so I'll be right back after these messages. My weekend was sensational. Dad, we don't want to hear about it. Did you get Oh, my granddaughter's hamster died, and I had to go to the funeral. Hey, don't you get it? Sensational? I just hope they cry like that when I die. <laughs> What did it look like when you look back at that now? What, what, what memories did that bring back to you? I, 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 keep, I certainly enjoy the thinness of the fellow there. <laughs> uh, but I, I keep looking at the, the, the Mary Tyler Moore show. I mean, Cindy has always got her dawn, my, my darling. And uh, I keep looking and I say, boy, it's, it really takes for me to watch this. I, I can learn a lot about acting. And, yeah. you know, it's I, a great. I, I restudy a, myself. It was one of the great series. Do you find yourself? in a rut when you do a series? I mean, do you find yourself sort of being in that character and not being able to get out? Because you're one of the finest dramatic actors I've seen, and, and, uh, and comedy is very tough. People think you walk out there and kind of throw off line. Comedy is very, very tough. I, I, you just practice, practice, practice. Yeah. That's what happens. Yeah. You learn that there's an innate sense of timing that you, you pick up. Some people can never pick it up, but I think, I think it's there to be learned. And just doing, doing, doing. And, you know, when some of the old comedians used to do summer stock down there, back in the Yeah, well, I, we worked at Kenley Players in Ohio, yeah. and I worked there years yeah. ago. Well, you know, like an Edward Everett Horton come in and say, mm -hmm. stop here, pu punctuate there, boom, gesture here. Mm -hmm. I mean, they would have the whole thing choreographed. Yeah. Everything worked, too. Yeah. It's amazing when you watch, uh, watch some of the great, you watch Jack Benny, mm -hmm. you know, and he never did an off-color joke in no. his life. He never did no. anything. And then oftentimes he'd get enormous laughs by just take, doing a take. Just, I'm thinking. I'm, I'm thinking. thinking. That's the greatest <laughs> line. Guy says, your money or your life. And there's this long pause. He says, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. That's great. Uh, politics. Let's go back to that for a second. I know that more you, laughs. you have yeah, more laughs. Well, actually, I said I got out because I, I, I never tell political jokes because too many of them get elected. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, I'm it's fairly well known that I have somewhat conservative roots having grown up in Ohio. You grew up in Kansas, but you weren't a kind of Bob Dole fan. You, you were a liberal, and now as a... William Allen White, you might say. Okay. Uh, and in Hollywood, uh, most uh, people in Hollywood, I guess, are, are liberal, aren't they? No. No? No, no. Look, look at all the, well, the, Schwarze had, the Schwarzenegger. Well, the Schwarzenegger, Bruce, yeah, but that's Bruce relatively Willis. recent. For years, the Republican Party relatively. had Mary Pickford and Roy Rogers. I mean, we had we had nobody. We had uh, or nobody would come out. Well, what do you call Ronald Reagan? Chopped liver? Well, he was a Democrat. George I Murphy. Well, Murphy. Yeah. That's uh, true. Uh, yeah, that's well, true. there there, that's there, true. there are a number of others. No, the 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 uh, I would say that the Republican conservative types probably kept more quiet, thinking that they would get hurt by the uh, perhaps a majority of liberals, which is not true. But they thrived mightily, and uh, and they uh, they came to the fore. I mean, uh, uh, there's a there's a big bash going on in uh, in uh, in Hollywood now. Schwarzenegger, Willis, uh, Kevin Costner. I don't, I don't know. Oh, uh, uh, um, the chubby gal from Designing Women. Uh, she and her husband are. Oh, Delta Burke and and, uh, um, and uh, Rainey. Yeah. Uh, what do you like about Republicans? I mean, is there anything about a Republican philosophy or anything about that philosophy that you actually like? But Well, if they did what I like about them, then I'd have no complaints forever. I feel that Republicans are there to conserve and preserve the advances Democrats make. Okay. In other words, Democrats made advances in the civil rights area and... In the social legislation era of, of Roosevelt, of course. Okay. And, and I, I think most Republicans will acknowledge that. I don't think... But a lot of those Republicans are now in Congress thinking about pushing some of that back. Mm, I think they Balanced want to preserve budget it. Balanced budget is certainly one of those ways. Oh, no, 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 no. You can't equate. That's Charlie Rangel's thing. You can't say anybody who says cutting taxes is racism or balancing a budget is racism. That's, that no, is... I did, I didn't, but that's I, what Charlie Rangel said. I'm just saying that that is a classic... Uh, most Democrats that I've... Look at Jack Kennedy. I mean, he talked about cutting tax rates as a way of of improving the economy. Yeah, well, I uh, I think that this has become a um, 
repetitious litany by every politician in That's the world. True. I read about all of the trouble that, uh, that Whitman is uh, starting to get into in New Jersey, uh, finding creative ways of taxation after, after cutting them um, uh, on the income tax. Right. Uh, so I, 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 You don't I, think budgets should be cut or can be balanced? I think, I think it, the, the American people, I'm, we, we talked earlier about huge crowds watching a particular celebrity. Uh, I, I think people, when are the American people really going to say that we are the least taxed nation in the Western world, that we get a lot of cluck per buck, and that should be cleaned up, the, the, the proliferation of funds, the trickle-down theory in Washington should be cleaned up, but uh, to, to constantly be elected and re-elected on the cry of cut taxes, cut taxes, or shame, cut welfare. shame. Cut, cut welfare. Cut welfare. They haven't figured out how to, how to take care of those people when welfare is cut. It's like people's talk about unions. Unions are gangsters. There may be some that, that have been in the past. Unions are wasteful. They, they don't allow new input, new blood. That may occur too. But what do you do without unions? You then are victimized by the total whims and, and uh, caprices of, uh, of the owners and the manufacturers. The, I think in the, the 30s, the and I think I think oh, in you the think we are an enlightened nation now. Do you? Well, I, I I think that most uh, listen. The unions have been set back by voting. They're crippled. No, they well. I mean, they have the right under the law. For instance, if if this crew wants to unionize today, mm -hmm. they can do that. But the law says management has to tell the truth. The unions do not have to tell the truth. That's the law. I, when they talk I mean, to work, you, you have the advantage of me. I don't. I don't uh, know that. That, that is that is the case. Okay, we're with Edward Asner. I'm we're talking a... politics. We're talking Thunder Alley. He's terrific, and uh, we'll be right back after these messages. Sorry about the rest of it, but that's the chance you take. I've decided against working for you. Before you even talked about it. Now, you, you knew John Wayne's politics, so how did you two get along? Oh, I, I don't know if it had anything to do with politics or not. He tested me the first day, and I evidently stood up well to it. From then on, it was uh, extremely cordial. Uh -huh. Interesting. Mm. Uh, he had an interesting speech pattern, didn't he? He always had that. No. He no. split the sentence in the middle, you know, I'm going to the mountain. Yeah. yeah. Chase the Indian. Yeah. It was always a kind well, of. Well, he probably with the one lung was running out of uh, air. <laughs> uh, the, uh, uh, that's right. Uh, the, um, but he was. He, was, he breathed right halfway through. He the was. He, he was so beautiful. When you remember Long Voyage Home. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah. He was so. Be and Shepherd of the Hills was yeah. the first thing I guess I saw him. But he. Uh, he also had a. Um, a very. Accented walk. That yeah, walk, walk uh, sideways. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was like, like, like your sentence structure. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, let's go back to politics. What's going on in Washington? You must have been extremely disappointed and morose when the, when, uh, the country basically uh, gave Congress to the Republicans after 40 years. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if I was morose at the time or not. Um, I was surprised, as were the Democrats. Um, I said, fine, uh, maybe, maybe that'll get Clinton um, to um, charging a little more, to being a little more fervent and, uh, and uh, uh, I read an aggressive. Article that, I, I read an article that the Hollywood community that supported Bill Clinton somewhat disappointed because he hasn't lived up to his promise, I guess. He hasn't, I, I'm disappointed because he hasn't gone to the wall for causes that he has uh, granted, I, I must give him credit for the fact that, uh, that he has passed more legislation, and I, I think most of it has been official legislation, probably uh, second to Lyndon Johnson, who passed some damn fine legislation. And was uh, also thrown out of office by the voters. Uh, that was because, because of, of the external, Vietnam. Because external, of the Vietnam War, yeah. basically. And, uh, and uh, if he hadn't been so successful at home, God knows how, long, how many times he could have been reelected. But his, uh, his foreign engagement did it. And, and I, I give uh, Clinton credit for uh, passing that legislation. But I think it's been uh, uh, not as controversial. The man has yet to do a veto. Uh, 
Uh, he has uh, he has yet to really take to the stump, other than for NAFTA. Uh, uh, the health bill was a dismal uh, a dismal failure, and maybe the people in the country were educated in the process, but I think most of them are busy licking their wounds of disappointment. Well, I think people are interested in health care, but not forming a huge bureaucracy, which is what that plan. Well, what have we got now with the various HMOs? Nothing but huge bureaucracies split into individual fiefdoms. Well, what we have is the best medical system in the world. That's why everybody comes here to get their operation. To those who can afford it. Uh, you can, uh, poor people can walk into any hospital emergency room. And not receive the best treatment. Uh, I disagree with you. Uh -huh. I don't think any doctor that I've ever seen in any emergency room would say that person's poor, I'm going to give them less attention. I just no, don't, I don't, I don't believe that. I think they take the Hippocratic Oath. They do their very best, whoever's on that table. I'm not, I'm not saying they're doing deceitfully and disdainfully. I'm saying that they are not the best. And, and those who got the money get the treatment. Well, I mean, those from the beginning of time, you don't think the Kremlin uh, uh, was hurting for anything, do you, during the Russian year? I mean, those guys mm -hmm. had the dough. They had Dachas, and they had... Uh, they had limousines and they had everything. I they kept I talking know. about the common good for everybody, but they were the only guys making the dough. Uh, if you have money, you do better. You do better today because you have money, right? Uh, yeah, I suppose, but I sure as hell use my, my health plan from my union. And if I didn't have that, I'd be a lot poorer. Uh, I, I still don't see what's wrong. You cite Russia. I'd rather cite Canada who certainly has a superior system to ours. No, they come down here for operations. You know why? They, what they come down here for? All of the special equipment that the money creates in this country. The, uh, the uh, what is it, H, uh, HMI? Uh, uh, the MRIs. MRIs, uh, the, the very fancy equipment that is centered in, and you, you go out to Nogales, Arizona, you're not going to find this equipment either. It's but, all centered in your big metropolitan But Canada has been a centers. socialist nation, and they're on their knees up there. They've got a lot of problems. I, in that I think country. our papers like to say that. I'm, I'm waiting to see just how, how far Part down of it is they're a bilingual country. Do yeah. you believe Americans should speak English? If you come to this country as an immigrant, you should learn English as, your first, you know, as, a, as, your, as a requirement think, for citizenship? Uh, I, th I think, I think you, you should learn. But to those who are incapable, uh, I, and you're primarily referring to the Spanish speaking. No, anybody who comes to this well, country, I mean, whether that's, they're. That's I the have Iranian cab drivers pick me up at the airport in Washington, they have no idea where I'm going. What I say. I mean, well, I would they, they know where you're going if they spoke English? Yes, because I, I would say I'm going to Capitol Hill. But if I say uh, it, uh, you know, if I don't say it in Iranian, but most of the cab drivers in Washington are spies, so I don't know. Well, anyway, I don't know. my my concern about uh, 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 the uh, non-English speaking ones is primarily uh, involved with, with the Spanish speaking ones, and they were cursed at the fact that their homeland is right across the border. And many of them think in, uh, thought in terms when they first came here of going home and being buried there and living there with, with the money they made here. But as communities were established here and the language passed on, passed on, passed on. So rather than having to learn the language, if they learn the concepts and precepts of the American Constitution, what it means to be a citizen here, if they don't speak the language, I'll accept them. Okay. Uh, fair enough. Uh, contract with America. Uh, Which America? Well... Let's start with uh, the fact that for 40 years the Democrats controlled Congress and did not live under the rules they passed for the rest of us. The Republicans took control of the House, and in 21 days they passed laws so the Congress had to abide by the same ones the rest of us abide by. Hooray for the Republicans. In and you had Democrats voting for that Absolutely. Well, a large Some of number. them were very, knew they'd never get back into their district if they didn't vote for it. Well, had they been a Democrat <coughs> Congress, they would not have voted for it. Oh, because a lot of them were probably under the sway of, of their, of their uh, committee chairman, etc who uh, would probably intimidate them about voting that way. Or uh, regard it as a, as, a, as, a, uh, as a defeat of their party. But you think the balanced budget amendments are fraud, basically. Is what I don't think it will cure our ills. I think uh, uh, it, is, it is treating the business of America as a business, which I think is a huge mistake. Because uh, businesses don't necessarily have to have compassion and human heart and, and care for. But many of them do. Them. Most of the charitable money contributed in America is contributed by uh, businesses. And in fact, if they didn't contribute, billions of dollars would be lost to charity. S say that again? Billions of dollars every year are contributed to charities by business. The biggest contributions to charities in America are from business. Well, perhaps, perhaps so. But in, in, that, in that, those golden halcyon days 
of, of Ronald Reagan when, when, when charity was, by government, was chopped to shreds and the, the trickle-down theory was supposed to take effect, charities underwent horrendous, horrendous reverses because the private hearts or the corporate hearts, as you wish to refer to them, did not open up to the extent and take up the slack that government had created. Well, the government creates a problem when it raises taxes so high that the, gov the businesses are in business to make money. Would you oh, agree with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They have to hit a certain target, mm -hmm. right? Now, if they miss that target because taxes are too high, it has to come Sometimes from Sometimes the targets are too high, too. I agree with that. I agree with that. But and, if you look at then, the, if then, the general then, margin the of profit, pre-tax profit in America, it's a very small percentage. And it, there's, it, there has to be growth. I mean, capitalism is built on growth. Mm -hmm. If you don't have growth, you don't succeed. And, and so... I'm not, I'm not sure how that works, and I'm not sure that that's correct. Okay, well, that's fine. I, I, I accept that. But uh, I won't do into a lesson on capitalism or anything else. But businesses have to make a profit. You would have start there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If taxes are too high, there's less profit. Mm -hmm. Right? But if taxes are low and there's a lot of profit, there's more money to contribute to charity, particularly if you get a tax incentive for contributing. Right? Mm -hmm. So the way to fund charities is to keep taxes low. That's a, well, that's a fairy tale. Well, you give me your I'm, version. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. I, I, Mr. I, I mean, I can, wait, wait, wait. I, I rest my case. I wait, can see wait. a cartoon. I want to hear your version. I can see a cartoon. I want to hear your version. You can't just make fun of my, my, my version. My, my version is very simple. I, do, I, think, I think what this country does, for instance, in the NEA funding, what this country does in terms of the arts it achieves by people starving and, 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 and living off the dole of corporations when they fund the arts, and those who don't get the corporate funds are out are out uh, slogging the streets, pounding the doors, looking for jobs as dancers, musicians, artists. We are the least funded artists in the in probably in the world, uh, uh, and at the same time, the pittance that they that government does give to the through the uh, uh, NEA is 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 controlled by by saying what a person can put in a picture, what a person can put in a book. That puritanical, that puritanical upbringing of America rings true throughout the land. Probably to all those Ohio politicians, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, uh, well, I think uh, the and, argument and my, came. And my idea, and my idea for, uh, I, I would hope, I would hope that more funds could be gotten from the corporations. I thank them for it, but I don't think that when they have low taxes and they make more profits that the arts or anybody else or charities no, are going to see any more of it. Well, I, I worked as a consultant to Fortune 500 companies, and so I, I happen to know for a fact that that's where the, that money comes from. And if you, they make a that, better profit, they, they pay more money to charities, and they fund things. Proportionately? I to, but, but you're also not proportionately. Uh -huh. You're right. Okay. Uh, but let me, let me say this. I happen to be in favor of funding the arts, because mm -hmm. I, so that's not, a, that's not an issue for me. I do have a problem when federal funding goes to somebody like Maplethorpe because my definition of art is if I can do it, it can't be art. Uh, and, and frankly, uh, peeing in a bottle and putting a crucifix in it upside down, mm -hmm. anybody can do. And that's but what the, he did. There, there, there that's are, not art. There are bound to be some glaring mistakes. Oh, wait, we've got to wrap it up. Mr. Asner, I appreciate it. Thunder Alley coming up on ABC. You're terrific. Please come back Excellent sometime and do a show you. with me, all right? Thank you. Coming up, jazz legend Pat Matheny.